The coalition has confirmed plans to shut down the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, an independently run, government-funded body that has been quietly funding $560 million worth of loans into clean energy programs like solar panels and wind farms over the past two months. And it's obvious why it had to go. Apparently. Because despite its clean energy investments actually making money and returning on average around 5.8%, whilst cost of government funds is around 2.8%, something that prompted its CEO to claim, we're running quite successfully, the coalition replied, not successfully enough. Because in these days of global warming and global financial crises, an organisation turning a profit and saving the planet just doesn't cut it. Apparently. And so if Mr Abbott plans to scrap things like the Clean Energy Finance Corporation and the carbon tax, what will he use to fight global warming? Well, I'm glad you asked, Tom. Tony Abbott's strategy is twofold. He will be implementing his direct action policy to help lower carbon emissions by 5% by the year 2020 or until they spend $2.9 billion, whichever comes first. It will definitely be the $2.9 billion because Treasury and independent modelling companies suggest the direct action policy will fall several billion dollars short. The second part of his plan to stop climate change has nothing to do with stopping climate change. He will be bringing in his green army for planting native seeds, weed control and creek bank regeneration. So that's planting trees, pulling weeds and cleaning creeks like some sort of Sisyphean clean up Australia day. And how will that change anything? Tom, I'm glad you asked. This is the soon to be shut down clean energy bank filled with all of its renewable energy research and innovation. And this is it once it's been knocked down by the coalition, turning it into a vacant lot. This is that vacant lot 10 years from now, once the trees planted by the coalition's Green Army have grown, and another 10 years when they've cut down those trees and built a road through it. This is the Green Army cleaning that road. And here they are cheesing each other with their champagne flutes because they clean that road. Sorry, hang on, I thought you said they built a road. Why are they on a raft? Because that clean road didn't stop global warming. Oh, right. Well, if the Green Army is making the country greener with more trees instead of cooler with less warming, let's head outside to Jazz Twemlow, who was at the Green Army Cadet School. Ah, oh, you, uh, you missed a spot. Tom, this is a person in the Green Army. Currently, this talking bin with hands is working on cleaning up this riverbed. I'll admit, it's a bold new initiative in tackling climate change, especially when you consider the fact that reducing CO2 emissions is affected by precisely nothing this person is doing. What? Shh. If the Earth is going to die, at least it can die pretty. So who is this person? Well, this army, if by army you mean soldiers who have no knowledge about the enemy nor any idea on how to fight them, will be a 15,000 strong force of school leavers and gap year students and the unemployed. So don't worry, climate. Scientists and facts have been fired, but at least a schoolie taking time out from their goon bag has your back. And there are some positive outcomes. Thanks to the litter-picking efforts of the giant Boy Scout behind me, soon this this chemically ruined corpse of a river will be entirely litter free, meaning the ghosts of fish can finally be at peace. Initiatives like this also create great photo opportunities because while you can take a photograph of a cleaned up footpath, you can't take a photograph of the future you've saved by actually reducing carbon emissions. So, off future, you're unphotogenic and therefore useless.